from Horsham, Pennsylvania, the Hathor Horsham High School Marching Unit. Our worship marching unit is proud to present our 2017 program, Beginning Beethoven Ender. The unit is under the direction of the very ruggedly handsome Antonio A. Perez. Musical arrangements by some guy named Tom and some guy named TJ, I think. Uh, visual and prop design by Pete. Color guard design by Kirby Kistler. She's nicer than all of us. Costume design by Katie Daly and constructed by A Wish Come True. Our program would sincerely like to thank our superintendent, Dr. Griffin, our principal, Mr. Williams, and our athletic director, Mr. James. Above all, we wish to thank Hatters for Music and the Do It All Dads who make everything we do possible.
Number 34, Jordan Colazzo. Number 66, Logan Flynn. And number 58, Nick Donati. And now the Golden Bear offensive starter, starting at left tackle, Jake Villanueva. Left guard, Brett Broderick. Center, Robert Easley. Right guard, Ryan Carroll. Right tackle, Rodney Gowan. Tight end, Brett Boatman. Wide receiver, Ronnie Morelli. Wide receiver, Cole Kitchen. Running back, Billy McKenna. Running back, Sterling Barr. And our quarterback, Brendan Alexa. Our captain for today's game, Bahako Horsham. Number 24, Adam Suter. Number 25, Josh Smith. And number 28, Anthony Kwadanowski. Our captain for Upper Moreland. Number 2, Brendan Alexa. Number 3, Cole Kitchen. Number 4, Sterling Barr. And number 72, Ryan Carroll. You'll turn your attention to midfield for today's coin toss. like Hatboro Horsham has won the toss and elected to receive. Gentlemen, it is now time to honor America. If you would please rise, remove your hats for the singing of the national anthem. The anthem will be sung by the Upper Moreland High School students Elizabeth Jones, Nina Vitek, and Jessica Stahl. Please hold your cheers until the last words of the national anthem have been sung. Thank you.
So that brings up a second. Moving up high. That'll bring up a second and 12 now. Second and for 12 the for the Hatters. Edwards in the backfield. Three wide to the left, one to the right. Empty backfield. Edwards has plenty of time on a crosser route. The number eight, and he screeches out to the outside and picks up the first down. Edwards pass complete. So Edwards pass for 14, 15 yards, picks up the first the down. First, first down for the Hatters in this first quarter. Line. The Hatters are moving the ball from our left to our right. Nice play action pass from Edwards. Now the Hatters break huddle, two wides to the right. High backfield. Inside handoff, Josh Smith. Nice Eight run by Josh play. Smith. Pick up a four yards. That'll be by Dejan Dukes. That'll bring up a second and six for the Hatters. So that brings up a second and six for the Hatters. Ball on their own 44, 43 yard line. They break huddle and eye formation, split wide. Oh. Tight end jumped off sides. 
Hatters might be a little rusty today. They've been off for four weeks. Waiting to see if they were even gonna play this game. Indication is a false start against the Hatters. Out of back up to a second 11 from their own 38 yard line. So that brings up a second and 11 for the Hatters. Ball on their own 38 yard line. They break huddle in the same formation again, split wide, I formation. Smith, the deep back. Hand off to Smith again, to the right. Oh, he breaks a tackle. Draw a so he picks up about Smith. eight yards Stop on that play. By Cole right the tackle by Cole the Kitchen for the from the Bears. And it brings up a third and four for the Hatters at their own 45-yard line. So the Hatters break huddle. Go with that same formation. Edwards spitting something out to his wide receivers. See the Hatters look rusty again. Looks like a false start. It looks like prior to the snap, we do have a flag on the field. Play long dead. So a false start on the Hatters again. On the Hatters. So it'll move them back five yards. It'll bring a th third and nine. It'll be third and nine from the Hatter or Horsham 40 yard line. So the Hatters have held the ball for the first quarter, first few minutes of the first quarter. They break huddle. Now they're going with that formation, three wide to the left, one wide to the right. Edwards alone in the backfield. Up a Moreland Blitzen. Same crossing pattern. Nice tackle by number four, Stephen Barr. Right around midfield, tackle made by Sterling Barr. That'll bring up a fourth and about four. So the Hatters come out in a punt formation. Fourth down and four yards at their own 45. Edwards goes back for the punt. Bar Mead back deep for the upper Moreland Comb for a fair catch. Makes the fair catch at the Upper Moreland 18 yard line. So Upper Moreland will get their first shot on offense. So Upper Moreland will have the ball for the first time in this first quarter with seven minutes and nine seconds left. The ball on their own 19-yard line. They break huddle, split wide. Eye formation. Oh. We have a flag down. Upper Moreland hasn't played for two weeks also. So they might be a little rusty. Off sides on the defense. So they'll move the ball five yards. So Upper Moreland comes in, they split wide. Nice hole. Number four, Sterling Barr, picks up six Upper yards for Upper Morning's first, first down. So Upper Morning breaks huddle, two wides to the left in a I formation. 
Bar the deep back. And he hands off to the fullback. Nice break, breaks two tackles. And he gets into the Happer O'Hurts from secondary. And he picks up a 12 yards. So the Bears are moving from our right to the left. And they have their second first down in the first quarter. Ball at their own 45 yard line. So we're going to see a double dose of Barr and me today. Quick snap and a nice tackle. Number 60. Chapman in the backfield to break that play. So it brings up second and nine for the Bears. Check one, that was Jake Schalke. So Oprah Moreland comes in the split wides to the right and they're hitting off the bar and he's got plenty of running room on the outside. You can't let him get into the open field. Too much speed there, but good, good stop by the Hatters. So pick up a 12 yards there for Barr. <laughs> So for more than breaks the huddle. First time the quarterback's in the shotgun. Passing play, nothing there, decides to run it. And a nice pass to Barr. I thought he was gonna run it, but he decided to throw the bar wide open down the left side. So that was about a 30-yard pickup for Upper Borland. So the Bears break huddle. Two wides to the right. Bar in the backfield to his right. In the shotgun. Takes the pass to the right, rolls to the right. Oh, and he's going to get sacked. So that's a loss of 15 yards. Great play by Nick Chapman and the Hatters. Senior. That's a loss of 13 yards. Brings up Upper Moreland's second down. Quarterback in shotgun. Upper Moreland jumped. So Upper Moreland's going backwards now. I don't even think Alexa, the quarterback, was in, was set yet. So Upper Moreland needs to get across her five yard line for a first down. So it's second and 27 for the Golden Bears at their own 32-yard line. They break formation two wides to the left, one wide to the right. Fakes to the crossing route, hits his tight end. Nice pickup. Picks up 10 yards. So Upper Moreland's in a third and 21. So the Bears break huddle with three wides to the right. Bar in the backfield with them. Ooh, intercepted. 
tip and intercepted by the Hatters, number 11. So that interception by was was by Ben Imunjulua. Alexa decided to throw that in double coverage, and it was tipped. The Hatters were actually dropped back in the zone defense, so it was an easy pick for Ben. So the Hatters break cover them. With their second drive, both teams have moved the ball with uh, no points. So the handoff was to number 24, Adam Suter. Short gain, pick up a three yards, three positive yards. So that brings up a second for the Hatters. and seven for the Hatters. Edwards changing the play at the line. Fakes it. Nice moves. Edward pass complete to Brother Jr. Takes it all the way across the 40 yard line now to about the 43. We have never had our first down from their own 43 yard line. So that was a 20 yard pickup by the Hatters. Nice pass by Edwards. So it brings up a first and 10 at the 43 yard line. Hatters break Cottle. They're in a split wide. Oops. We have a whistle timeout by Upper Moreland. So we have a timeout on the field. So we have one minute and 35 seconds in a scoreless for first quarter. Since we have a few minutes, the Upper Moreland Golden Bears came in today's matchup with a 10 and one record with their only loss coming with a quarterfinal match with Marple Newtown two weeks ago. The Bears were favored, but Marple Newtown squad shut down the two dynamic running backs, which we'll be talking about all day today. Number four, Sterling Barr, and number 24, Caleb Mead. Barr is a senior, Mead's a junior. So that's why we're allowed to have this Thanksgiving Day game today. The Hatter season ended four weeks ago. So the Hatters break Cottle after that timeout. Edwards throwing a jump ball out of bounds. Good idea. The Hatters had the taller wide receiver and shorter defensive back by Upper Morning. But the pair was the play was broken up by Caleb Mead. Mead and Barr are both the defensive backs for the Bears also. So they pretty much play both sides in the entire game. Draw by the Hatters. So Smith on the carry picks up seven yards. So the Hatters are at midfield, third down and three. So the Hatters break huddle. Two wides to the right in the I formation. Smith in the backfield. Deep back toss. Oh, Upper Moreland breaks up the play. Great play by number 17. 
Nice play by Brian Mallory, number 17 for the Golden Bears. So that brings up fourth down. The Hatters look like they're going for it. The Hatters might break huddle, but there's five seconds left. This might be a stall. Okay, so that's the end of the first quarter. And that brings the first quarter to a close. So the Hatters might want to think about this decision now after the first quarter just ended. Brings up a fourth and five and no switch side. Upper Morton had a great season this year. They were 10 and 0 going into the playoffs and they were that number two 5A seed, but got upset by the number seven seed Marple Newtown on a very close game that could have went either way. So the Hatters were sitting off to the side waiting to see if they would even play this game. But found out two weeks ago and decided to start preparing for it. The Hatters' last game was October 27th against Cheltenham, which they won decisively. So the Hatters break caught on. Let's see what they're going to go with here. Fourth down and a long five, and it looks like Edwards, who is the punter also, is in shotgun formation. And it's completed to number four, number six, for first down. So that's Calvin Brodus' first reception of the game for a first down. Nice play by Edwards. Edwards does well rolling to his left. I've seen it all season. That keeps defenses off. They usually expect the quarterback to roll right. The Hatters break formation, two wides to the right. Smith in the backfield. And off is to Smith, he's got some running room to the right. Breaks a tackle, and then a second tackle. And he carries a couple up, or more, ah, oh, we got a late flag here. Looks like a personal foul. We'll see who it's on. We'll see who this call's on. Could be on both sides. Edwards just shook the ref's hand, so we're going to find out what's going on here. This is a great rivalry. This is the 84th edition with the Hatters holding the Distinguishable record. Here we go. Personal foul against the Bears. Unsportsmanlike conduct. That's a 15 yard penalty. So. So Mallory's found hit with a 15-yard penalty. Sometimes the refs don't see the first hit. They just see the retaliation, and that might have happened to Mallory. So the Hatters take over, first and 10 from the, from the Golden Bears 19-yard line. Two wides right. Smith, the deep back. Fake it to Smith. He's got plenty of time, but needs to get rid of it. Throws it high, but it's picked up by number 24. And he picks up positive yards. So that's Suter's first catch. 
So it picks up a three. It'll be second and seven for the Hatters. So the Hatters go with a split two, two wides to the left, I formation. No room there for Smith, but he picks up positive yards, picks up two yards. So it's going to pick, going to leave us with a third and six for the Hatters. So the Hatters break huddle. Split wide. I formation with Smith the deep back. Oh, all sides on Upper Moreland. I've seen the Hatters all year. Edwards, one of his best traits. He has a great cadence. The Cheltenham game, Cheltenham was offside seven times. So here's our first offsides on Upper Moreland. So it's gonna bring up a third and a long one for the Hatters. Ball at the 10 yard line. So the Hatters break huddle here. in a tight formation. It's like the old fashioned wishbone here. So it's gonna be close. Looks like he's short. So Smith got hit in the backfield, brings up a fourth and one. Let's see what the Hatters are going to do. I know Coach Capusta, he's going for it. So that formation didn't fool anybody. Let's see what Coach Capusta calls on here. Going with the same formation again. It's a power backfield. Let's see what they do this time. They go to the left side this time and it's a pick up of six yards. So Smith off to the left side there. So it'll be first and goal for the Hatters at the eight yard line. So the Hatters go in this same formation again. I don't know if the Bears seen this in the first game. So the Hatters pick up one yard on that carry. So it brings up second and goal from the Hatters, from the Bears five yard line. Let's see if they change this formation up. They bring in Calvin Brodus this time, take out that second fullback. So let's see if they spread him out. They do. Oh, he threw, oh, Edwards threw that ball before he even locked. Edwards 
Nice breakup by Cole for the Hatters. Meade had that ball. Got to do that slant a little quicker. So let's see what the Hatters call on this play. Third and five. Third and goal from the five yard line here for the Hatters. They go with two wides to the left. Smith in the backfield, shotgun. Touchdown, Hatters. Brodus was wide open there. They faked to the left. Caught Stone Barr kind of napping on the right side there. So the Hatters score for the first score, and it's 6 0. And Kim comes in for the extra point. So the kick is up. Oh, and it's blocked. So it's 6 0 Hatters in the second quarter with seven minutes and 42 seconds left. So I just want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. This broadcast is being brought to you by VT22, our HAPO Troop 3 Boy Scouts. Our Boy Scouts are made up of some boys from Upper Moreland and some from HAPO Horsham. I also want to bring up both the Hatters and the Golden Bears. These players have been playing with each other for many years. The Bears are fed by the Will Grove Bears, and Hepar Horsham is fed by the Horsham Hawks. So these guys have been playing each other for 10, 15 years and know each other well, besides playing in other sports like wrestling, lacrosse, track. They look forward to this game every year. So Upper Moreland will accept the kickoff here. They got Barr and Meade at back, deep back for Kim's kickoff. Still hasn't gone 10 yards. So the Hatters tried an onside kick and it didn't work. It went eight yards. So Upper Moreland will take over first and ten at the Upper Moreland 40 or at the Hatters 48 yard line. It's tough to kick the meat and bar back there, but I think the Hatters were looking for something a little better than that. So Upper Moreland breaks the huddle. They got Meade and Barr in the eye formation and two wides to the right. Oops. Another flag against the Bears. I thought the headers would be a little more rusty this week. But it looks like Upper Moreland's a little rusty. It's tough when these kids go two weeks without playing in a game. I mean, they practice, but it's not the same intensity. So they're, so, so they're picking up the flag. So it'll be a repeat of first and 10 there. Makes you wonder what the ref saw there. Looked like the tight end jumped off sides, but. So Upper Moreland breaks huddle again with the same formation. Oops, option, fumble. And the Hatters recover it. It's a shame there, because it looked like the Upper Moreland player jumped on it, but I guess the Hatters stole the ball from him. So now the Hatters take over, first and 10 in Upper Moreland territory at the 44-yard line. 
Still seven minutes and 41 seconds left in the second quarter. So the Hatters break cuddle. Two wide to the right, one wide to the left. Souter in the backfield with Edders, Edwards. So it's a handoff, a double end around. Up oh, and then Bradis just fumbled. Who's got this one? We're gonna have to wait for break the pile. Upper Moreland's jumping up and down like they got the ball, and we're gonna, it looks like the Hatters recovered their own fumble. The Hatters were lucky on that play. So it looks like second and four for the Hatters at the 43 yard line. The Hatters are driving from our right to our left. It's a handoff to Smith, and he picks up seven yards. So the Hatters pick up a first down. Ball on the Golden Bears 32 yard line. First and 10 for the Hatters. The Hatters break huddle. Split wides in the I formation. Edwards under center. Up. Now the Hatters jumped off. So it's going to back the Hatters up five yards, and it'll bring up first and 15. So, I mean, everybody kind of expects a little sloppiness. The Hatters and Bears' first game was a 41-40 win by the Bears early in the season. So the Hatters break huddle, same formation again, split wide, I formation, Smith deep back. Play action, Edwards gets rid of it, high throw, great catch. It's going to be close to the first down, but it looks like it'll be short. So, another catch by Broadus. So it's going to be. So it's going to bring up second and three for the Hatters at the Bears' 25 yard line. So the Hatters break huddle. Two wides to the right in an I formation. Smith again, the deep back. Long count. And there goes Smith off to the right side. Hurdle and players, and he's down to the five yard line. Smith's playing a big game today. So that'll bring up a first and goal for the Hatters at the five yard line. He's tough to bring down, Smith. So the Hatters break huddle in that strong formation in the backfield again. 
Looks like the Hatters took a timeout this time. Oh, I, I stand corrected. Second timeout by Upper Moreland. Guess they didn't like the Hatters coming out in that formation again. So the Hatters are pretty much controlled the ball the, this whole first half. There's still five minutes and 20 seconds left in the first half, second quarter. And the Upper Moreland's already taken their second time out. So let's see what Coach Capusa calls this time. He's going with that heavy backfield again. First and goal from the five yard line. Smith the deep back in this formation. And he give it to Smith on the right side. Bounces off one tackler, but can't get away. Picks up about a yard, short yard. Actually maybe just got back to the line of scrimmage. So there was no gain there. So the Hatters break huddle. Coach Capusta sticking with this lineup. Heavy backfield. Fakes it to Smith this time and rolls out to the right. Pass to the fullback. Touchdown, Hatters. So a nice fake there for the Hatters. That was to Anthony Kwiatkowski. So it looks like the Hatters are coming in for a two point conversion. I stand corrected. They're gonna go for the extra point. Edwards holds on the kicks. So Kemp. See if he can get a little better kick this time. Low snap, Edwards picks it, but this time Kim drills it. Extra point is good. So the Hatters take a 13-0 lead in the first quarter, or first half here. Upper morning looks a little sleepy, a little flat this morning. I'm sure Coach Beach is going to be screaming at him at halftime. Let's see if they can... Get something going here on this kick. The Hatters like to keep it away from the two deep backs, so I don't think the onside kick will be in the plan this time. We'll see. So we have a great crowd here. I've seen it bigger, but we have a nice crowd from the Hatters across from us. And the stands here on the Upper Moreland side is pretty full too. I'm sure if it was a little warmer, we would have a little bigger crowd, but it's a cold, brisk day. So here's Kim's kick. It's a short one. Pop up. And so it was a short kick and a hard hit by the Hatters. The announcers down the end here are screaming for that should be a flag, but it's a legal hit, you know. He didn't, he didn't do anything vicious except hit the kid hard, but brings up a first and 10 for Upper Moreland at their own 39 yard line. I'm sure Upper Moreland wants to get something going here. And there goes Barr through to the side. And he picks up seven, eight yards on the game. So it brings up a second down and two for the Bears. Nice carry by Barr there. What he does is he hides, hides behind his big offensive lineman and then finds a hole and darts through. He's got a lot of speed. So now Meade is the deep back. Good job, Megan. 
And it's his carry this time. And he looks like. And the Hatters recovered a fumble. So the Hatters take over. First and 10 at the Upper Moreland 47 yard line. So the Bears need to settle down and tighten up here. There's three minutes and 50 seconds left in the half. See if they can stop the Hatters. The Hatters go in a split formation. Play action going for the long one. He's throwing it deep in the, in the, and he's wide open for a catch by number 11. And it'll be first and goal for the Hatters at the three yard line. Great catch by Ben. So it was a tackle by, by number 24 Meade to stop the touchdown. And it brings up first and goal for the Hatters at the three yard line. Edwards went for the home run. I figured that Coach Capusta went, must have been practicing this heavy backfield. Give a new wrinkle, and it's Smith through the, and he's in for a touchdown. So Smith's first touchdown of the day. So the Hatters score and take a 19-0 lead here. Extra point to come. Another low snap and ooh, almost blocked. He, I don't even know how he missed it, but it was drilled through. And it takes the Hatters to a 20 nothing lead here in the first half. We still have th three minutes left. Well, after the last kickoff, I said coach, Beach would have him prepared for a short kick. Let's see if he does again. The Hatters are not going to kick off the meat or bar back there. They're just not going to do it. I seen the tenant game where them two, the tenant coach just kept kicking off to him, and it was like 60, 70 yards every run. So, and uh, Mead what ran back one for 84 yards for a touchdown. So. Those long kickoffs are not going to happen tonight. So let's see what Kim does this kickoff. So I'm sure the Upper Moreland wants to pull something off here, get something going here before halftime. They also get the kickoff in the second half. So want to get some positive yards, anything positive to get back into this game. So let's see what Kim does this time. So they tried the onside kick again. Upper Moreland recovered it at their own 48 yard line. So they'll take over first and 10. So Upper Moreland breaks huddle. Might have to open it up a little or stick with their game plan. Oh, fumble! Of 
quarterback jumped out there too quick. Alexa was lucky he didn't lose it. So they lost a few yards. So Alexa goes back out there. Be second and ten. So now they go into a heavy backfield. And there's nothing there. The headers were ready for that play. Nice tackle by number 52, Chapman. So it brings up a third and 10 for the Bears at their own 48 yard line with less than two minutes in the half. They break huddle. They got two wides to the right in the I formation. Barr in the deep back and they toss it to him. He's looking for space and he does get outside but he only picks up four. This might be four down territory for the Bears. So it's going to bring up fourth and five. Let's see what Coach Beach does. I think he's like Coach Capusta. He's going to go for it. He's letting the, oh, the clock stop because he went out of bounds. There's a minute and 44 seconds left. Upper Moreland has one timeout left. The Hatters still have all three. So Alexa comes back out with the play. Me comes back in. So Barr is the deep, the only back. Alexa under center. He fakes it to him, rolls out. Nice catch. So pass to number three, Kitchen. It's a first down for Upper Moreland. So it's a first and 10 for the Golden Bears at the 38 yard line. Looks like they're going into a hurry up offense. They definitely don't want to give the ball back to the Hatters. So he play action fake. And it's a catch by Kitchen again. So it's a so it's a pickup of eight yards. So it's going to bring up a second and short. The Bears are breaking huddle quick. They got the Hatters confused. So hand off to Barr. So Barr picks up four yards, and it'll be a first down. So it'll be a first down for Upper Moreland at the 26 yard line. Clock's winding down, 30 seconds left. Upper Moreland's trying to save that last time out. Barr's trying to lose tackles, miss tackles, and he lost yards. So we have some action going here. Looks like Upper Moreland caught their last timeout, and there's also a flag on the play. So we're waiting for the chop block on the Upper Moreland. Play is declined. So Upper Moreland will take their last timeout. Coach Capoose that decided to decline that. Instead of sending them back and then keeping the timeout, he decided to keep them at the 29-yard line. 
No more timeouts left. And there's 25 seconds left. So let's see what Coach Beach has in mind here. He wants some points, definitely. Be like a 45 yard field goal, but instead they go with this power formation, one wide to the left. Here we go. They do a play action. It looks like they're doing a pass. He's got a player wide open. And it's intercepted. So Cole Kitchen's pass was intercepted by number six. Calvin Brodus. That play just took too long and didn't fool anybody. We have a flag on the field. I'm wondering if it's holding on the Hatters. So it'll be first down for the Hatters. It was unsportsmanlike conduct after the interception. So it's going to back the Hatters up to. So it'll be first and 10 from the four yard line for the Hatters. Good first half. All right, so the Hatters have the ball first and four, uh, first down, first and 10 at the four yard line. So the Hatters break huddle. There's 11.4 seconds left. So there they go to hike it. Edwards takes a knee, and that's the end of our first half with the Hatters leading 20 to nothing. Surprisingly 20 to nothing. The Bears look like they have a little hangover here from two weeks ago's loss in the playoffs. From Ireland High School, marching turkey unit! The Upper Marlin Turkey Unit is led by drumstick major Tyler Old Suzuki and is under the direction of Chief Glenn Callahan. The band staff includes Assistant Culinary Director John Blaze Hamill, Caption Heads Alex Abrapablo Clemente, and Lauren, who shall remain last nameless. The instructional staff includes Travis Harvest Happy Hill, Matt Potato Salazar, Rob Owen Roasted Waltz, Nick Sweet as Nutmeg Hall, Melissa Horn of Plenty Hindi, Robin, Where Am I? Brandley, Jack Bear of the Wampanoag Wilderness Tribe, Kate, Why Do All the Bass Drummers Talk Like Me? Fielding, Nicole Italian Scorchetti, and Doug Toasted Marcelo Pendles. The Upper Moorland Marching Unit has a proud tradition of excellence dating back to 1620 when they first arrived on the Mayflower. And they are excited to perform a special rendition of their 2017 field production entitled Turkey Gazing. The show has been basting in the oven for months, and we hope you will enjoy our sweet and salty, savory yet succulent, superlatively supreme season encore performance. We would like to thank the Upper Moorland Pumpkin Pie patrons and our colonial masters at the Upper Moorland School District for their ongoing support. We'd also like to congratulate Tony Perez and the entire Happerow Horsham Marching Unit staff, student membership, and Hatters for Music organization on another wonderful marching band season. And our best wishes to all for a happy Thanksgiving. Drum Major Tyler Old Suzuki is your band ready?
imagination will carry us to worlds we never know. Okay, welcome back, fans, to our second half today for our broadcast, VT22, of our Hatboro Troop 3 Boy Scouts. As I mentioned before, our Boy Scouts are represented in both schools, the Hatboro Horsham Hatters and the Upper Moreland Golden Bears. As we return to the second half, the Hatters are up 20 to nothing. Uh, the Bears made a few mistakes in that first half, and I'm assuming that Coach Beach ripped them at halftime. They might have had a little hangover from our playoff game two weeks ago against Marple Newtown. So, Upper Moreland will Received the kickoff in the second half here. The Bears are doing a little different lineup now. They decided to put Barr back. And let's see what the Hatters do here on this kickoff. Do another short chip. And we have a fair catch. And the play ends. And uh, Bears will take over first down at their own 33-yard line here. Oh, they're marking that at the 35-yard line. So the Hatters come out on defense. Let's see if Upper Moreland decides to change things up. They got two wides to the left, one wide to the right. Barr in the backfield by himself. And the handoff is to Barr. He tries to get to the outside. It looks like there's a little holding there, but the rest, are, and it goes out of bounds. So a nice pickup there by Barr. They're going to try to get Barr rolling here in the second half. So it'll be first down Upper Moreland at the uh, Hatter's 48-yard line. That's what they need to do. They need to get, get Barr out in space. I bet you they try to go wide a few times. So now they go to the split rights, split wides to the right. Hand off the bar to the left. And this time he has nowhere to go and he loses three yards. The Hatters weren't fooled on that play. So big loss, three yards. Upper Morning back to their side of the field. And it'll be first down. I'm sorry, second down and 13 yards. So me comes in now. So now they go split wide to the right. Alexa in the shotgun. 
Here comes, he fakes it to Meade. Then he throws a pass and he second bounces it to Nicole Kitchen. Came up short to Kitchen. Kitchen was his favorite target in the first half. So it brings up a third down for the Golden Bears on their 49 yard line on their side. Me comes out this time. Number 30, McKenna comes back in. Let's see what play Beach calls up here. Alexa on their center brings the fullback back in. Two wides to the right. Oops. And he trips up. Might have tripped up on one of his own players. So it brings up fourth and 12. Let's see what Coach Beach does here. I think Upper Moreland's going to go for it here. Oh, looks like he's bringing the punt team out. Changed his mind. So the Hatters held on first, the first Golden Bears possession here in the second half. It's a fake, and he fumbles, and he kicks it out of bounds. Nice fake there. Looks like he had some running room. Great setup there by the Golden Bears, but they lost the ball out of bounds, and it'll be first and 10 for the Hatters at their own 45-yard line. So that's the fourth turnover, third turnover by the Bears so far in this game. That's kind of the tail of the tape here. So the Hatters take over first and 10 at their own 44-yard line. Split wides to the right. I formation, Edwards under center. <coughs> Hand off to Smith. Smith dodges a few players, runs over a few players, and he picks up a first down. Smith had 77 yards in the first half on 17 carries. So, and that put him over 1,000 yards for the season. Came in with 946 yards. So the Hatters are in a hurry up offense here. Two wides to the right. Edwards in the backfield with Smith to his right. And it's a draw to the quarterback. Edwards goes out to the right side and gets tackled low. Pick up a seven yards, six or seven yards. Late flag thrown here. Referees are discussing the call. Waiting for the referee's call here. That's dead ball foul. Personal foul against the Bears. We couldn't see the scrummage over there. Too many players. But that's going to be a 15-yard penalty, and it's going to move the Hatters down to the 23-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 from the 23-yard line for the Hatters here. The Hatters break huddle. Hatters go split wides, eye formation. Adams the deep back. Fakes to Adams. Out to Smith. Quick pass out to the wide receiver. He cuts back inside and he picks up four or five yards there.
So it brings up five yards there for the Hatters. And it'll be second and five. Ball on the Golden Bears 18 yard line. Hatters break huddle, two wides to the left. I formation, Edwards under center. Oops, hands off to Smith. He stumbles and he loses yards. Kitchen comes in, shooting through for a loss on two yards there. Kitchen looks like he's the only player playing today for the Golden Bears. Made a couple nice tackles in the first half. So they'll bring up third and seven for the Hatters. Ball at the 20 yard line. Hatters break huddle, split wides, eye formation. Smith the deep back, fakes to Smith. Edwards rolls out to the right, keeps it to himself. He's gonna be close to a first down. There was also a late flag there. Sometimes the refs need to take control. They waited to the whistle. The pile was still moving, but sometimes that brings in a late flag. Upper morning's clapping, so it's probably against the Hatters. That was due, though. The Hatters have been taking the last two penalties. So we're waiting for the call here. But referees are talking. So they gave the Hatters a first down, but then it was a penalty. So it'll be first and 10 from the upper more than 27 yard lines after they mark those penalty yards off. It was a dead ball foul, so the yards aren't marked off until after the play was done. Said Hatters break the huddle. Edwards under center, fakes to Adams or Smith again. Pick up a seven, eight yards there. So Calvin Brodus has had a nice first half or, or game so far. Seems to be Edwards' favorite receiver. Picks up six yards. It's going to be second and four for the Hatters at the 20-yard line. Hatters break huddle, split wides. Smith deep in the backfield. Edwards under center. Gives it to Smith this time. Nowhere to go. So the Bears shot those gaps. Nice play by number 65 of the Bears. Nice tackle by Brett Broderick of the Bears. Loss on the play, so it brings up a third. Third and five for the Bears. Third and six for the Hatters in Bears territory. Hatters break huddle. Two wides to the left, one wide to the right. Edwards in the shotgun. Sauter in the backfield with him. High snap. 
Edwards needs to get rid of it. Throws an air ball. <laughs> nice catch by Satter, but nothing there. So it'll bring up fourth down. Let's see what uh, Coach Capusa decides to go here. So. So it's fourth and six. Edwards has come to the sideline for the play. So here we go. 28 in motion. Edwards rolls to the right. Throws the 28. He's wide open. Nice block. Oh, and he's down to the two-yard line. Great call by Coach Capusta. Pass was to Anthony Kwantowski. Kwantowski. Uh-oh, there is a late flag here. Might have been holding on the Hatters. Waiting for the ref's call here. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the Bears again. That's the third one on the Bears today. It happens sometimes. You know, these young boys losing 20 to nothing. Kind of lose their temper last game of the season. So the rest are discussing on the side there. So there they go. First and goal for the Hatters at the one yard line. So here they go. The Hatters are in that bunch formation again. Oh, they moved. So it was a false start on the Hatters. They'll move them back five yards. So here we go. So let me take that back. The refs changed the call to all sides on the defense there. So it's first and goal from the half yard line for the Hatters. And they hand off. So they hand off to Kwanowski. And it's a touchdown. So the Hatters are up 26 to nothing. And as Kim comes in for the extra point. So Kim's in the setup here for the extra point. Set it, Kim's, Kim's kickoff is up and good. And the Hatters are up 27-0 here in the third quarter. Four minutes and five seconds left. And it looks like the Hatters came prepared and the Bears are still on their hangover for their loss two weeks ago. So the coaches are caught out on the field uh, with the captains. See, the refs are just starting to see a little too much nonsense after the plays and felt this was the way to stop it. And not a bad call by the ref. Gather our, the troops together and say, listen, you know, we don't want anybody hurt here. Um, 
let's get back to playing football. And uh, good call by the coach, uh, by the ref, to call the coaches out there. So, um, so Upper Morning goes in that formation again with uh, Barr to their left side. That's where Kim seems to be kicking off to uh, all season. Um, let's see the Hatters come up with a little different plan here. Yep, so he lines up and it's a short kick and they call for a fair catch and the kick's at the 44 yard line. So the Golden Bears will take over first and 10 at the 40, 45 yard line. The Hatters are just hoping to uh, stop them on defense here. Bears haven't gotten a first down yet in this half. The Hatters had the ball twice. I'm sorry, the Hatters only had the ball once. This will be the second possession for the Bears here in the second half. Lexa under center, hands off the bar, and he tries to get outside, and there's no room there. Smothered defense. So bar, no gain. So it'll bring up second and ten at the 45 at the Bears' own 45-yard line. So the Bears are trying to run the ball to the left side, but so far with no success. Lexi in the shotgun. Ooh, tipped by number 52, Chapman for the Hatters. So that'll bring up a third and 10 for the Upper Moreland Bears. So, so it's gonna bring up third and 10 for the Bears at the 45 yard line. Still plenty of time left in this game. Three minutes and 21 seconds. Upper Moreland breaks huddle. Three wides to the right. Bar in the backfield with Alexa. Oh. Tipped by Edwards. Almost caught by the Upper Moreland receiver. But it fell through his hands. So it brings up fourth and 10. Looks like the Bears are going to stay in this formation. Up, oh, here comes the punting team out. But as we've seen the last time, Upper Morning faked the punt. This is a little different here now. It's fourth and ten. So. There he goes, he fakes it again. Trying to pass. Number three, Kitchen. He's got. Oh. He's across the. Nice call by the coach there, but there's a flag on the field. He crossed the, uh, their, their uh, line there. So it was a ineligible pass. Powies decline. The Hatters will take over first and 10 at their at the Golden Bears 45 yard line. So the Hatters will take over on downs here. So it'll be first and 10 at the Golden Bears 45 yard line. The Hatters want to run some clock here. Two wides right. 
High formation, Edwards under center. Smith in the backfield. Hand off to the fullback, Souter. Picks up three yards. Correction on that, I was calling him Souter. Souter, fullback, number 24. Pick up a two yards. Smith going wide left this time. Souter in the backfield to the right of Edwards. Split wides to the right, two wides to the right. High snap, Edwards takes the ball, fakes to the left. So Edwards on the keeper, picks up five, six yards. So it's going to bring up a third and four for the Hatters. So the Hatters in a split wide. Low snapped Edwards. Blitz. Oh, low throw. Edwards had to get rid of her ball. The rest are discussing that play. It's no big deal. He he said it was a completed catch, but it's right at where the ball was anyway. So it's fourth and four anyway. You look at it, but the Upper Moreland fans are all riled up. So. Yeah. So it's fourth and four for the Hatters. So it's fourth down here. Edwards in the shotgun. So he rolls to his left this time. Throws it deep. Up. Oh. Good coverage there. So it's incomplete. Golden Bears will take over. On downs. Kitchen on uh, coverage there. So here we go. The Bears back on the field for their third possession of the third quarter. Trailing 27 to nothing. Bears want to get something going here. So they have two wides to the right. Alexa under center. Hands off the bar and he cuts to the right. Oh, and he has picks up some nice positive yards there. I think they need to get, just keep giving the ball to bar. Picks up six yards. Tackle by the Hatters, Ben. So it'll be second down and four for the Bears at their own 45 yard line. <coughs> Alexa under center, bar in the backfield. Two wides to the left, he fakes the bar. Throwing deep. Ooh. Tried to make an over shoulder catch. Alexa a little upset with himself. Seems to forget 
you know, the players looking back into the sun. So it's going to be so it's going to be third and four for the Bears. Good call by the coach there, changing things up. So Lexan, shotgun. Three wide to the left, one wide to the right. Alexa getting chased in the backfield and gets crushed. So the Hatters, number 56, Brett Johnson, tackle on the backfield. So it'll be fourth and 14 for the Bears when we return in the fourth quarter. With the Hatters leading 27 to nothing. So here we go, start of the fourth quarter. The Hatters leading 27 to nothing. Up and more than in their third punt formation here. Let's see what they do. The other two, they faked it. All right, it looks like they're gonna punt this time. And it's a shank off the left side of his foot. And he gets a good bounce and it goes out of bounds at the 40 yard line. So, it was a 23 yard punt for the Golden Bears. And the Hatters gonna take over first and 10 at the 40 yard line. So here we go. This is our fourth quarter here. Hatters break huddle. Split wides. Edwards is going to go under center here. Smith in the backfield. Hand off to Smith. Breaks a tackle. Goes to the left. And he's tackled by a host of bears there. So, uh, pick up a three yards on that play. It'll be second and seven for the Hatters. Smith pretty much carried the ball today. So the Hatters going with a split formation. Three wides to the right, one to the left. Tossed. So toss play to the right side. So Isma Colazzo. Short gain there, so it's going to bring up a third and six for the Hatters. Nice tackle by a host of Bears on that play. So the Hatters are trying to run some clock here. So it's going to be third down. Hatters break huddle. Two wides to the left, one to the right. Tight end switching sides. Edwards in the shotgun. Quarterback draw up the middle, and he has enough for the first down. So a nice pickup by Edwards. Pick up seven, eight yards on that carry. So the Hatters across midfield in the Golden Bears territory. First and 10. Hatters are just trying to run some clock here. Oh, 
Bad exchange there with the Hatters. Fumble, first turnover by the Hatters. So Upper Morning has a little spark here. Recovered the fumble. They'll have the ball first and 10 just inside the Hatters territory at the 49 yard line. This is what the Upper Morning needs, a little spark here. Breaking huddle, see a little bounce in their step here. So they got one wide to the right. Eye formation. Fake the bar. Alexa folds, rolls out to the right and has nowhere to go. Big loss on the play, 12 yards. Nice play by number 54, Jack Connell. So now, it's like second and 22 for the Golden Bears. At their own 40 yard line, they need to get to the Hatters 38 yards. Draw to the fullback there. Nice pickup, 12 yards. The, hat, the Hatters are keying up on bar there. Nice draw play to the fullback there. A quick hitter, I should say. Pick up 12, 13 yards in that. So it's going to bring up a, a reasonable third and nine for the Golden Bears. So Upper Morning breaks the huddle. This time they got Barr in the slot. Three wides to the right. Alexa fakes real quick. Has all the time in the world back there waiting for someone to get wide open. And he shorts it. He had some time back there. The Hatters were kind of in a zone defense to that left side there. So it's going to bring up fourth and nine for the Bears. I have a feeling they might go for this one. So Lex is with uh, Coach Beach right now to get the play. So it's fourth and nine for the Bears here. So the Bears break huddle. Lex in a shotgun. Bar to his right. Three wides to the right. Bark takes a snap. They fake it. Screen to the screen to the left, and it didn't fool anybody. They were using bars as a decoy, and they threw it back to the tight end. The problem is the Hatters held his ground there and broke the play up. Wow. So here you go. The, they went backwards. They actually gave the Hatters plus yards on that. So it's going to bring up first and 10 for the Hatters at the Golden Bears 44-yard line. So the Hatters survived that turnover, the first turnover of the day for the Hatters, and uh, get the ball back, actually gaining yards here. So so Hatters break the huddle. Edwards in the shotgun. So I hand off to number 28, Anthony Kwantanowski. Another senior with a big day today. So. So it's gonna bring up a second and one for the Hatters to pick up a nine yards on that. Whoops, refs changed their mind. Gonna get the Hatters a first down there. 
So it'll be first and 10 for the Hatters at the Golden Bears 33 yard line. So Edwards under center, split wides, eye formation. Smith still in the backfield. Header's taking as much time as possible. Flea flicker, Edwards going deep. Jump ball. Catch by number six, Calvin Brodus Jr. for his second touchdown of the day. What a call. But it was a jump ball. Upper Morton had just as much a chance to intercept that, but it just goes to show you what kind of day it is today. Everything's going the Hatter's way. I see Coach Beach with his hands folded on the sideline. Just, what are you gonna do? Nothing you can do about it. So the Hatter's will try the extra point. So the Hatters extra point is up and it's good. So the Hatters are up 34 to nothing. So after that point attempt, the Hatters are gonna try a kickoff here. Um, Upper Moreland. I think everybody's shocked at this game right now. It's 34 nothing. It's kind of like it was the first game where the score was heavily 41-40, but um, Upper Moreland has been shut down today by the Hatters' defense and a couple mistakes uh, by Upper Moreland. So. You know, the Hatters came to play today, and it looks like Upper Moreland did. Uh, still got plenty of time left. Let's see if uh, Upper Moreland can get a drive together here and uh, get some points to avoid the shutout. So Upper Moreland goes back in their same formation again with bar me deep. Kim with the kickoff. I have a feeling he'll just chip shot it again. To... There we go. And there we go. Fair catch. So with the pooch kick, Upper Moreland will take over at the 49 yard line, at the row 49, 48 yard line, first and 10. With six minutes and 28 seconds left in our 84th annual Thanksgiving Day game. Upper Moreland breaks in a bunch formation here. Hand off the bar on the outside, breaks a tackle, and he picks up seven yards. See, six, seven yards, the bar, that's fine, but then they go away from it. I think they should just keep feeding them the ball. He's a senior, it's the last Thanksgiving Day game. So here they go in that same formation again. And there he goes. Bar breaks a tackle and gets to the 31 yard line. So, nice pickup of 17 yards. So, there's first down for Upper Moreland. Bar's coming off, Bead coming back in. So, they're going to go in that bunch formation again with me, the, the deep back. Hand off the meat up the middle. Oh, we got a flag. 
Usually a holding call in that type of area of the formation. We'll find out. It's calling an upper morning player to the line. So it looks like a holding call on the upper Moreland player. So it's going to back him up. Spot fail. So it's going to bring up first and 18. So upper Moreland trying to pick things up here. So it's first and 20 for the Bears at the Hatter's 42-yard line. Still in that bunch formation with Meade in the backfield. Toss to Meade. Misses a tackle there. Breaks a tackle. Scoots to the outside. Picks up five yards. And then another foul. So we got a foul here. Looking like a little personal foul after the... We'll see who it is. Is it on the Hatters or the Golden Bears? <coughs> what do you think? These players don't like each other? So the Bears are backing up here already, so they already figure it's on them. So it's on Upper Moreland. Unsportsmanlike conduct. This is like the fifth or sixth penalty against the Hatters. So it's going to back the upper Moreland back. So it's going to be second and 31 for the Bears. So upper Moreland's Hand off to Meade, nowhere. And he stopped at the line of scrimmage. So no gain, it's gonna bring a third and 31 for the Bears. So we have four minutes and 30 seconds left in this game. The Hatters are looking to pitch a shutout here. Time out on the field, a player has to walk off. He's got blood on his arm. So here we go, clock running. Alexa comes back in with the play. Third and 31 for the Bears. The Bears even have a play for a third and 31. Probably not, but they're breaking into this bunch formation again. Hand off. The bar makes a little spin move, picks up five or six yards. So, so we have another flag on the play. These uh, unsportsmanlike calls sometimes could just be a cursing. So. So, uh, the rest walking a player off the field. So the player was ejected, number 58 for Upper Moreland, Rodney Gallons. It's a shame, he's a senior defensive end and guard. Um, tough way to go out in your last game. So, refs marking it off. So right now it's fourth and half barrow. 
So it's going to be f fourth, and I can't even add it up. Looks like 38 yards. So the Hatters back in punt formation, waiting for the kick. So Penny Packer back for the punt. High snap, gets it off. Lot better kick, fair catch. And the Hatters, Calvin Brodus makes a fair catch at number six. So the Hatters take over first and 10 at their own 36 yard line with three minutes and 40 seconds left. So the Hatters want to run some clock and hopefully hold on to this shutout. So here we go, the Hatters break huddle. Edwards still in the game. Two new running backs in the backfield with them split wide. Edwards on the center. Toss. So okay. a toss a left. So second and four for the Hatters. So the refs are discussing, was there a late flag again? So the clock's rolling. We're under three minutes here with the Hatters winning 34 to nothing. Second and f a, a long four for the Hatters at their own 42 yard line. Oh, nice pass by Edwards. Incomplete to number 11, Ben Imagewega. So it's going to be. So it brings up third and four, a long four for the Hatters. Two minutes and 32 seconds left. Hatters are looking for a first down to run some clock here. Upper morning shift in formation here. Hand off, nothing much there. Pick up a yard. So, Kwiatkowski on the carry. It's gonna bring up fourth and two. So the Hatters are looking to keep the ball. I'm gonna get that last first down and run this game out. So let's see what Coach Kapusta calls here. The Hatters are in a split formation. Backs in an eye. Edwards under center. Nothing there. He loses yards. So. So the refs are just trying to keep control here. Break up the pile. The Bears are going to take over first and 10. Looks at like the Hatters 40 yard line. Looks like the Bears are going to keep their 
their stars in their uh, first team. They want to break this shutout here. It's 34 nothing with a minute and 33 seconds left. Tight formation, bar in the backfield. Hand off the bar, picks up two or three yards. Refs need to keep an eye on number three, Cole Kitchen. He's already been flagged twice tonight. So we're down to a minute left here. Upper morning breaks huddle. Going that box formation again. Fakes it. Looking to pass. Oh, incomplete. Broken up by number 11, Ben Imijigua. So it's going to bring up third and seven for the Bears with 46 seconds left here in the game. With the Hatters leading 34 to nothing. Bears are going with two wides to the left and high formation. Fake it. Oh, and it gets sacked. But number 34 of the Hatters, Jordan Colazzo. Another sophomore. Clock running down to 20 seconds here. The Bears gonna try to get in one more play. It's fourth down. Going with three wides to the left. To the right, one to the left. Alexa takes the snap. Batters going back into a uh, zone defense there. So that's the game. And the Hatters end this Thanksgiving rivalry 34 to nothing. I don't know if the players are going to shake hands today. Uh, it's something that the refs try to kind of do now. So it looks like the refs broke it up. They're not going to let the players shake hands. So looks like uh, the players are going to stay in their own groups and announce the MVPs. Well, I just want to like thank everybody for this presentation, and uh, we'll see you again next year. Uh, for a great game today, 34 nothing final for the 84th annual Thanksgiving Day game. The Hatters the winner, and we'll see you next year. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, at this time we would like to honor the defensive and offensive players of the game. First, the defensive player of the game from Hatboro Horton. Number 52, Nick Chapman.
Hopkins, a hopper of worship in Northern Orleans on the 2017 football season. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Have a safe holiday.